So let's examine the following example that deals with inductance. Let's suppose an alternating electric current is traveling along an inductor towards the right as shown in the following diagram. So we have a wire which essentially loops into the following coils and this is our inductor and an electric current is traveling from left to right as shown by the following arrows. So suppose the electric current increases from positive 2 milliamps to positive 20 milliamps during a time interval of 8 milliseconds. So in part A, determine the direction of the induced electric current within our coil and in part B, calculate the inductance L of our wire in the coil if our induced EMF is 3 volts. So, let's begin with part A. So, let's begin by essentially understanding what is taking place within our inductor. So, within our coil, an electric current is traveling and it's increasing from positive 2 to positive 20. So, because we have an increasing electric current, that basically means that our magnetic field produced within our coil will also be increasing. So, because our I increases, our B inside the coils will also increase. Now, because our magnetic field is increasing, that means our magnetic flux will also increase. So, once again, because the current increases, this implies that the magnetic field will also increase because magnetic field is directly proportional to the electric current I. This implies that our magnetic flux within our loop also increases. So, because our electric current is traveling in the following direction, we see that our magnetic field B points along the following direction through our loops of wire. Now, let's apply Faraday's law. Now, we know because we have a change in magnetic flux, that means by Faraday's law, that change in magnetic flux within our coil will induce an EMF within that coil. Now, by Lenz's law, since our magnetic flux is increasing as a result of the increase in our magnetic field, the induced EMF will tend to oppose that change in magnetic flux that is, our induced EMF will tend to decrease that magnetic flux. So, our induced EMF will create an induced electric current that points in a direction whose magnetic field, which we call the induced magnetic field, points in the opposite direction of this original magnetic field. So our induced magnetic field as a result of that induced electric current will point in the opposite direction and that implies that our induced electric current will point in the opposite direction of this initial electric current. So. Once again, this implies the induced magnetic field must point in the opposite direction of the original magnetic field. So that magnetic field, our induced magnetic field is shown in red and it points in the opposite direction as this blue magnetic field. Now, this induced magnetic field is created by the induced electric current. So now we know our direction of this induced magnetic field so we can apply right hand rule number one to essentially determine the direction of our induced electric current. So because our field is traveling this way, we essentially wrap our hand around this way and that implies our induced electric current must travel in the following direction. So it travels from the right to the left along our inductor as shown by the following uh, purple arrow. So therefore, the induced current points in the opposite direction. So we were able to use Faraday's law and Lenz's law to essentially determine in part A. Now let's move on to part B. Now we want to actually calculate the inductance L of the wire in the coil if the induced EMF is 3 volts.
So recall the relationship between the inductance and our induced EMF. So in a previous lecture, we were able to show that the induced EMF within our coil is equal to the product of the inductance L and the rate of change of our current with respect to time. Now, for certain cases, this is approximately equal to our inductance multiplied by the change in I over the change in T, where our derivative has been replaced with change I divided by change T. So, let's take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for L. We see that L is approximately equal to our inductance, or actually our EMF, multiplied by the change in T. This goes on top and we divide by change in i. So we essentially are given the fact that our time interval is 8 milliseconds and that's equivalent to, well we take this divided by 1000 and that gives us 0.008 seconds. So we plug that in into this quantity. Now we are given that our initial current is 2 and our final current is 20. So 20 minus, eight, uh, uh, minus 2 gives us 18 milliamps. So to convert from milliamps to amps, we divide by 1000 and that gives us 0.018 amps. So the bottom becomes 0.018 amps, we multiply, divide, and we get about 1.3 henrys. So this is the quantity of our self-inductance, or simply inductance, found within our coil of wire.